Good evening, everybody, and welcome to What's It Worth. This is going to be an amazing show. Andrew Ford is not here this evening, he's in Atlanta, but he sent along to us his creative director, Crystal Summers, and she's going to fill in this evening. Crystal, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Amazing. So we've got a lot to talk about. The most important thing we've got to talk about is the upcoming auction. And uh, Crystal's here to talk to us about what's going to be happening this weekend at the auction house. We have an amazing weekend planned, Saturday and Sunday. Starting at 11, we're going to be having our auction. I wanted to give you an idea of how many items we have in the auction. This is our catalog. And we have uh, like over 1,500 items. There's something for everyone. Wow. So what have we got here? We, okay, we have some really exciting things. I'm going to start with the silver medallion set here. I'm going to hand you one so you can have a feel. Wow, this is a heavy. yeah this is a really beautiful set we actually have over 20 pieces of this medallion silver in the auction it's very rare it's from the 1860s and it was made dur during the neoclassical silver period so a lot of people have interest in this we're getting a lot of phone calls on it and it's just really beautiful silver wow. so that is an item number one what else have we got okay what we have next are these really beautiful I'm going to keep one and I'll give you one. These wow. really beautiful golden earrings. These are Italian earrings, um, but they have Mexican pesos in them, and they're real pesos. So this is 22 karat gold. These are really special earrings. We have a large collection of jewelry for this upcoming auction, and um, a lot of it is from Europe, and many of the pieces are handmade and one of a kind. Wow. We actually have some pictures, I think, to show, do we not, on the... Uh items that we have. What next? Okay, I'm going to move on to this really large vase. This is called Vaseline glass. Oh, I love it. Isn't it interesting? Okay, so it has this green yellowy hue and that is indicative of the Vaseline glass. So um, in order to tell that you have real Vaseline glass, you actually need to put it under UV lights. So I had a really fun time. They're going to put it up here. I had wow, a really fun time is. testing to see if this is real Vaseline glass. I got in a dark room and we have the UV lights and it will blow up and it'll glow like a Christmas tree. So that is the Vaseline glass. The reason it glows is interesting. It has uranium in it. So when I told one of the coworkers what I was doing, he freaked out and wanted to call poison control. <laughs> this is a true story. And um, he was talking about hazmat, and he's like, how much did you touch? And we had to call Andrew, and Andrew had to talk him off the ledge because he was freaking out. <laughs> so I brought this because it's beautiful and it's really interesting. It's quite an interesting. That. So the, the, really uh, the Vaseline glass is from the 1920s, and the reason why they call it Vaseline glass is back then everyone thought it looked a little bit like petroleum jelly. Because mm -hmm. some of it, this is actually more of a greener piece, but a lot of it has more of a yellowy hue. So this is, um, we had a collector in earlier in the week and he's like, this is a really large piece actually. Normally it's a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. So that is the next item. Wow. What do we have up next? Let's look at the screen. Wow. Maybe these items here, I think. Is that what's next? Okay. Let's have a look. Okay. So this is a really beautiful pair of Chinese vases. If I was Andrew, I would say vases. That's how Andrew says <laughs> it. Um, and they have matching dragons. Dragons are very common in the... Um, Chinese art world for prosperity and um, and good luck. And on the bottom, yeah, there they are. Wow, on look the, at the colors. Yeah, I mean, really that's vibrant. Amazing. On the bottom, you'll also see that they have chop marks. See these marks down mm -hmm. here? This is very helpful in identifying uh, the period of time that they were made and who the emperor was. So this is a really um, special pair, and we've had a lot of interest on, um, on them. You'll notice that they're really fine, finely decorated. There's a lot that went into this. The, the hand painting on this is really exquisite. Wow. Amazing. What else would we All got right. What else? else do we have? Yeah. Um, I think right now we'll go into the mermaid. Should we go into Look this beautiful? So she's called Ocean Beauty because she's beautiful, obviously. Um, this is a yadro. Yadros are um, Spanish porcelain from Valencia, Spain. So this company has been um, going since the 1950s and it's very popular. We, every time we have an auction, we have Yadro and it sells. It's just a very uh, reliable item and mm -hmm. beautiful. There's always just so many d details. If you have a look, you can see that there's coral all around it and 
she's just really beautiful. And she's already had bids on yes. this, she hasn't she? So she's popular. I think she's got maybe three or four bids already. So there might be a little war over her. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. What else have we got coming up Okay, here? what else do we have? Maybe we have the... Um, <gasps> what about yeah. the painting? Okay, let's go into that. Yeah, this is amazing. Okay, so this is a von der Locken. He Absolutely. is an American artist from the early 19th uh, hundreds and you'll see here this is a nymph and there's a hidden Zeus in the clouds if you look up oh, here yes. there's a sneaky right Zeus here. in the clouds so um, Frank von der Locken was an American artist who's mostly known for his portraits and landscapes we have actually a large collection of his work from the Herschel and Adler Gallery in New York which is a very prominent gallery in New York and it's a great um, variety too we have oil on canvas oil on board we've got a um, uh, etchings and colored sketchings and al also some charcoal work so it's a, a really good variety of his items and um, he will be I think opening up our, our art on day two. Andrew often says you can tell an awful lot more about the back of the painting mm -hmm. than the front so there yes. you go beautiful There's the back of the painting that's an old yes. painting. Yes mm -hmm. definitely. Right Wonderful. Wow, All you right. know your stuff. All You're doing right. a great job Thank this you. evening My filling in for Andrew. My first time here in King Andrew's chair. It's very intimidating, <laughs> but I'm doing my best. You're doing a great okay. job. All I right. am so impressed. What have we got next Should we move up? on to the uh, snuff bottle? Absolutely. We have okay. quite a few of these. We have quite a few of these yes. at the store, actually. They are beautiful. So this is a carved opal snuff bottle with a jade top. You'll see it, that it's uh, finely carved on both sides and the history behind the snuff bottle. They believe that the snuff bottles were introduced to the Chinese in the Ming Dynasty from merchants and missionaries, which is interesting, wow. isn't it? Isn't that just <laughs> interesting? Um, so um, the snuff bottle contained ground up tobacco and herbs, and so they believe that it was good for coughs and colds and energy, and um, it was actually perfect for travel because it's so little and it would keep the snuff fresh, mm -hmm. which I thought was really interesting. Wow. You, we sell a lot of Chinese items. We have a really big Chinese market, and the snuff bottles are right up there with the plaques and the vases um, because they're so beautiful, and there's a lot of... There's a lot of uh, detail and a lot of time is taken on these objects they're they're often the snuff bottles are often carved out of stone or porcelain and um, just really ornate and decorative and and the perfect addition to anyone's collection wow what have we got coming up okay here? and then we also have this really beautiful Versace dish here we oh, have a Versace. set of them. lovely yeah beautiful some really vibrant colors Wow definitely very beachy oceany this would be great in someone's condo on the beach I think that's oh, that's where I envision them going <laughs> um, yeah it's a beautiful set um, a lot of color we we have something for everyone in this auction Ooh. I am lucky enough to be able to physically touch every single item as it comes through because I'm photographing them and cataloging them and um, every single auction I'm learning more and more about the arts and antiques. Andrew's kind of like lit a fire in me and I, I, I not only enjoy what I do but I'm starting to love it too. And um, besides the, the uh, paintings and the silver, we have a really large collection of jewelry. We have a lot of European jewelry coming mm -hmm. through, lots of really nice diamonds. Um, what are some of the other things that we have going on? Some rare guns that people are interested in. For the guys. In. Yeah, guns if for the guys. If we can help at all, if um, any questions you want answering, just give us a call. You can call us at the auction house. Are you ready? 941-359-8700. Um, we're actually open Monday through Friday for people to come and view. You can always call, let us know that you're coming. Um, this week's auction, we only have them once a month, so get them this weekend. We serve a wonderful breakfast, a sushi lunch. It's a fun, fun time. Most of it's sold online because it goes all over the world. So if we can help us all, just give us a call, 941-359-8700. So Crystal, tell us, what do you do each and every day there? We have the auction <laughs> monthly, but the work that actually goes into The build-up, it. it's, it's a lot of work leading up to the auction. Um, every day is different in uh, the arts and antiques world with Andrew Ford. And um, I just, I, you know, I wanted to mention something interesting about Andrew. So we also have a, another really special sterling silver set, and it's a Tiffany set. And the consigner came in earlier this week to come and look around. The consigners get really excited when everything's on display and they want to come and see, you know, their pieces for the public. And he, one of the consigners came in earlier this week and said, do you know why I gave my piece to Andrew Ford? Um, tell me. And so he said, I've had this very rare Tiffany silver set 
for over 30 years and I've taken it all over the world and no one ever was able to tell me uh, what the pattern was. And he, and, uh, and he said, Andrew took one look at it and knew that it was union. And that sold him. And he's like, why would I want my piece to go anywhere else? And mm -hmm. so um, I think a lot of people really enjoy meeting Andrew and, and learning more about their pieces. It's really mm -hmm. fun. So every day is different and every day we shoot different things. So I think that's uh, you a just bit. Made, You reminded me of when I first started working with Andrew, actually. This lady came in and she said that she'd bought a rug from him a while back and it wasn't working for her anymore. And uh, uh, would he take it back? He said, yeah, bring it in. Anyway, he asked her how much she'd paid for it and he gave her a whole money back. She'd had it like a couple of years. And I'm like, wow, Andrew, that's amazing. And he said, actually, I didn't even sell it to her. <laughs> I'm like, what? He said, no, I've never seen that rug before. Ah! That's the type of guy we get what? to work yeah. with. Seriously. Yeah. It's, I mean, we have moments. It's, you know, some days are more difficult than others. But on the whole, the guy is just really is Yeah, it's amazing. a lot of fun. I tell people, come just to come. You know, I think a lot yeah. of people are intimidated when they hear auctions and they feel like they need to, they need to bid or there's going to be this pressure to be involved. But I tell people, come and, and just watch. It can be a spectator sport. And, and, um, and there's obviously a really lovely sushi and drinks and, and, and Andrew's amazing. When everyone gets hungry around three or four, it's pizza time. I mean, it's yeah. really a party. And yeah. the first auction, I, I thought, I'm probably never going to be a bidder. And then by auction number two, I'm bidding. By auction number three, I have my card ready. It's just exciting. You kind yeah. of get drawn into yeah. it all. And you take a lot of telephone bids too from all over the world. Yeah. So we there's many different ways to bid at the auction. You can bid online. We have two different platforms mm -hmm. that we use. You can bid in-house or you can bid on the phone. And mm -hmm. um, phone bidding is really fun. I've been a phone <clears throat> bidder before where I take the phone calls and I'm yelling out to Andrew what, what their bid is. And at one time I was on the phone with a guy from England and he was bidding on a paperweight. And again, I'm learning, so it's, a, it's like an education for me. When I first started shooting these paperweights, I had no idea of the value of them, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm on the phone with him and we went up to 13,000 on the paperweight. And it, you know, I'm not even buying it. It was so exciting for me. 10,000, 11,000. <laughs> so it really is just like a, a circus, but the best kind. <laughs> yeah, amazing fun, amazing fun. Now the other thing too that we uh, talked about on the last show was our farmer's market. Um, what's it worth? Well, it was absolutely amazing. The turnout of people was amazing. Everybody enjoyed it. And our next one's going to be February the 12th. And this is at the farmer's market. It's um, a live what's it worth where you can bring your wares and Andrew will give you a free evaluation. And in fact, the next one, Fox 13 News, is going to come and film it. So if you're out and about at the farmer's market, the 2nd of February, we would love to see you. If you'd like to bring something along for evaluation, do that. If you'd like to chat to me about it, call me. Call me. Have you got your pen? 941-953-7776. And... Um, we can discuss whatever you'd like about it. Don't forget, too, we also have Sarasota Trading Company. I'm actually down at Sarasota Trading Company, which is Burns Court um, on Pineapple. The auction house is right next door to Detweiler's, mm -hmm. Lockwood Ridge and University. Um, any, any issues at all that you have about that, just call 941-359-8700. And if you have something that you're interested in consigning and that you think might be something that we would put through the auction, feel mm -hmm. free to email us at mm -hmm. sarasotastateauction at gmail.com. The best way to do this is to send us pictures of your items. Yeah. And then from there, we can see if it's a good fit. Yeah. In fact, right now, we've got a promo of the um, auction coming up this week. So let's go into that. Thirty thousand with James. Charles back to you at thirty-two five. I have five bidders currently. Are all in? Crystal Summers, thank you so much for joining us. You're absolutely amazing. You did a brilliant job. Maybe Andrew's lost his job. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, guys? She was absolutely amazing. You truly do know what you're doing. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Do like and share on Facebook. Um, we're now going to say goodnight to you and thank you so much for joining us this evening. We'd like to show you um, 
a clip from our What's It Worth down at the farmer's market. It was great fun. And like I say, 2nd of February, if you're out and about, come and join us. It's so much fun. Good night and thank you. It's going to be an awesome time. So let's get this show on the road. What's It Worth! I am so excited. Guess who I see here today? Gus Malas, come on up here, our good buddy. Whoa, brilliant. How are you? Oh, I Smattery. love him. It's smattering of applause. <laughs> Andrew, how are you? Thank you for coming down, Gus. Thank you, Andrew. What have you, what have you brought down for us this morning? You know, this is just something I picked up in my closet. <laughs> Actually, it was on my wall. My cats collect Coca-Cola memorabilia, actually. And you, you sold a piece that I, I, I gave you some time ago. Absolutely. That was, uh, that was a Coca-Cola uh, Scouts car wash sign as well. These are from the mid-20th mid century. Sure. Uh, I suspect this is known as the Coca-Cola button. Right. Uh, you see this one. Uh, I like this one where it says, drink Coca-Cola in bottles. Uh, you, you're all familiar with the Candler family uh, that began the Coca-Cola uh, brand in Atlanta, Georgia, and after many changes over the years, they were uh, directly responsible for some of the earliest marketing we had here in the States. Uh, of course, uh, the earlier Coca-Cola pieces uh, were more Victorian. Right. This, was, this is more of the 1940s, 1950s design that you saw outside of country stores. And, right. Uh, this was to market the drinks. General stores yeah, and absolutely. all that. Absolutely. And, and what's the shape, you think, on this? This may have been indoors at one point. I suspect it may have been. It's actually quite good condition. I got this with another uh, uh, cardboard piece. You know, the ones that had the cardboard, the cutouts. Co the cutouts. Oh, absolutely. And I have a 44, 1944 sign that I'm going to bring another time. I look forward to it. And that is in mint condition. But when is this? When do you think that you date this this particular button? You know, these these were done with that patenting. I think these were typically done anywhere uh, post World War II all the way through about the 1960s. And uh, my guess would be this is probably 60 to 70 years old. Condition's quite good. I've been doing shows in the Atlanta area, antique shows, for over 20 years. You see a lot of Coca-Cola memorabilia. I've seen a Is that a hotter market, market up there for that? It's a particularly strong market, absolutely. In fact, a, lo a lot of it goes that way. So you know where I'm going, Andrew. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. We'll What's bring, the word? We'll have to bring it. My, I, I've seen these go anywhere from uh, three to $800. Uh, this one in this condition is probably on the higher end of that market. Okay. Uh, this is particularly good graphics. Uh, there's no rust. There's no apologies to the back side of it. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't surprise me at all uh, in today's market to see this bring several hundred dollars. But it's a it's a good piece uh, of the collectibles market of Coca-Cola. And uh, I think it would sell with alacrity. Thank you. Drew, appreciate thank you. How are you. Tell us a little bit about what you brought us today. This, I was told, is a skull. A human, human skull from Tibet, and I was told um, I really don't know very much about it. Sure, sure. I, I found it about 15 years ago in a, a little dusty shop in Seattle, Yeah. and I'd seen pictures of such, but never um, came upon a real one. Sure, sure. This, I was told, was from the Philippines yeah. um, probably a hundred plus years ago. And the gentleman that sold it to me was at a show, and I forget just where, said this when they would, um, when the tribes were warring, sure. it was a trophy, and then they would take the, the enemy's skull and they would make, um, make this. Sure. I think this is made of a palm yeah. fiber, and I don't know the, the paint. I would agree with you. These are typically uh, trophies from battle, essentially. The different uh, tribes that would have acquired these. I've seen these out of the Philippines. I've seen them out of Indonesia. I've seen them with some of the islands as well. Uh, this is typically what you would find here, palm ferns and things. And then they would polychrome these pieces. And they would put these out uh, to remind you of uh, sort of their prowess on these things. And this is probably- Beware. Yeah, very much beware. Uh, I've seen a few of these in early catalogs. They're identified as late 19th century. Uh, you'll notice here, folks, a beautiful profile on this one. And these did come out of the islands over the years. Uh, and they were quite prized and collected in the early 20th century. Today, there is a ban on uh, human parts being sold today. So these are typically traded and not sold. Uh, of course, uh, they also can't be brought state to state. Um, otherwise, it's considered uh, some form of trafficking, and I don't know exactly the codes on this one. 
but uh, this is a uh, very ominous, typical piece that you would see from that period, and actually great condition. Um, you'll notice the underside of this one, if you'll see here, folks, really hasn't been handled much over the years. Uh, very similar to the way it would have been done. Uh, the paint is that cornflower blue color. It's, uh, the pigments are really fantastic. These are handmade pigments. These were not paints that were acquired at the store. So uh, they're really uh, a testament of uh, the, how they've held up over time. They're beautifully made. And Andrew, let me... And on the back, in the occipital area, I suspect that this might have been trephined at one time and healed. Sure. If you look at, if you look at that defect. He's got a, uh, a dental and a medical history, so he's right. He's looking at the skull itself, and uh, I would agree. Uh, you know, and again, uh, life in the 19th century was a little more difficult. And uh, if something happened like that, uh, there wasn't a hospital that you could go to, but somebody may have uh, nursed them back. And uh, this, this gives you an idea that uh, this, I, I don't know a, a lot about uh, the, the makeup of the skulls, but judging by the line on this one, this is probably a, a middle-aged male. I would think. That's my guess. It doesn't appear to be an elderly figure on this one. Changing gears here slightly. And the, the, that does. Sure. That's I've, I've, I've had many of these over time offered to us. Uh, you see the beautiful carving on this one, all the different insignias, uh, the metal mounts on this. These are all often low-grade metal, uh, beautiful dragon on the side of this one. You'll notice if you lift the cranial cap on this one, it's got a beautiful interior to this one. Your understanding was this is Nepalese? Um, or Tibet. Tibetan, Nepal, even uh, Bhutan. You'll see all these pieces here. That's right on the border between India and China, and you'll be familiar with these pieces. Uh, three of these were offered to me about uh, three years ago, and they were uh, they were to be shipped to me from New York City. And uh, I spoke to a lawyer friend of mine who said you might not want to ship them <laughs> uh, for that very reason. But the quality of this is is a little bit better. Uh, usually they're they're a little more naively done. This is particularly well done. Uh, of course, all the little skulls uh, adorned throughout here. You see the underside of this one. I've seen these online anywhere in the five to ten thousand dollar range. Oh, so. uh, what did you pay for this, if I may ask? That was about nine hundred bucks. Nine hundred. How long ago did you acquire this? Fifteen, twenty years. Fifteen, twenty years ago. I'm not testing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all, um, again, for insurance purposes, uh, probably, a, probably a four or five, even $6,000 appraisal on this one. It's really fantastic quality. It's not I no uh, for everyday decoration for some, uh, but uh, of course, uh, it's a pretty scarce, pretty scarce object. No, it's, it's better than Halloween for sure. This is really a fantastic piece. And... Uh, it, it's uh, typical of things you would see uh, brought over from that country uh, over the years. Uh, these made their way over to the States. These were popular in Europe. They still are, actually. Uh, in fact, I know one of the Rockefellers who bought one of these from me uh, in the Hamptons about 10 years ago, and he told me he had quite a serious collection of these that were handed down to him through his family. So you'll, you'll, there, are, there, are, there is a, a collecting base for these pieces. Uh, again, I suspect it's a 19th century one, and uh, really beautifully made with the little uh, semi-precious cabochons here. Uh, really a fantastic piece. If I could show this to the to the to the cameras here, and the the quality of the carving is uh, superb. You know, they were working with uh, primitive tools, and uh, the tattooing, which is typically what I call this. Uh, is extremely detailed, precise. So this was done by a master carver. And uh, this is a trade uh, uh, in the 19th century. Certainly, you see them coming out of Bhutan, Nepal, Tibet. Really an amazing piece. And the beautiful, beautiful eyes, glass eyes, to give it a very realistic nature on this one. Thank you very much for bringing these down today. Really interesting. Thank you. Have you noticed the middle in the sky? I've seen these, again, they're, they're all over the board. I've seen these. Uh, from 
several hundred onto a couple three thousand on this one uh, might even want to do a little carbon dating to get an idea of exactly how early the polychroming on this was done um, haven't seen one of these in quite some time it's not something you run into very often no that's Really Nor have I seen quote. them in any catalogs or anything. Yeah, you really don't. They're they're a pretty they're a pretty scarce objects. Thank you both for bringing them down Thank today. You. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs>